about more than a month, uh, David showed me what is on his heart for, uh, you know, a, a series, a few things that you would hear about as well all through this uh, year and the, end, the coming year. Uh, but he started with an idea of loving like Jesus, and in order to love like Jesus, you want to really live like Jesus. Amen. And uh, he just picked up uh, three ideas, and one of them is to be baptized like Jesus or to basically live like Jesus. And in that, he said, Jesus humbled himself, and he was anointed, and he lived in the authority of the word. And if you do that, you get the power, you get the value. You get as well to be sustained by the power of the Holy Spirit. You get to live in an allegiance to who God is and what he says. You live by his word, okay? And we're saying this because we want to clarify again that, you know, our vision, which is Jesus' love, transforming communities or that transforms community would require would require first that you would see Jesus not just that you would meet with Jesus that you would see Jesus and experience Jesus eat Jesus drink Jesus breathe Jesus live by Jesus and only if you're like that you're going to then love like Jesus then we will see Jesus' love wherever you are transforming communities. Amen. Now, you know, you, you can be, uh, uh, and we hear that a lot, you know, especially in the current day, that you would transform your community and, you know, you would do great works and, you know, you're amazing, you're awesome, phenomenal, all of that stuff, yeah? We don't want that. In this house, but definitely as well, in the Bible, God is not about you doing anything. Thank you very much. Really lovely, you know. Thank you, but no thanks. What God wants is his power, his wisdom, his salvation, his love to transform people. Not your blessed thoughts not your effort, nothing, nothing out of us. So we want to really experience Jesus' love. And then this is why we want to be strong in faith and deep in prayer and bold in witness. And that's by being really led by the Spirit, wholehearted in worship and living an authentic life with God and each other. We live and breathe Jesus, then Jesus in us and through us in other people as well will transform the communities, not us. So within that, he asked me to share about the message of Christ. And the message of Christ really is, you know, simple. It's this. This. All of it. From cover to cover including the maps, the abbreviations, you know, the table, the word of God, okay? This is the message of Christ. So I thought to read this to you today, but David kept me from doing that because <laughs> we will not finish. It takes about three and a half days to read the Bible through. If you, if you journey through, okay, I've done it before, you'd really be blessed if you would do that. If you don't sleep for three and a half days, you just keep reading, okay? Keep someone as well. Hire someone to prick you if you're sleeping, you know, slap you around or whatever, and keep reading. Three and a half days, you read the Bible through. Don't do that. Okay, here is the thing. I'm going to just read to you the Word of God. But let me tell you a few things first. We all have received... And it is actually quite rampant in the church of Jesus Christ that we have fake gospels. You know, like fake news, all of that stuff. And it's, it always has a kernel of truth. Maybe even some good amount of truth. But it is fake. Because it has things that are not Jesus. 
Okay? So I'll, I want to share with you, there are many of them, but I want to share with you about four of them. You know, prosperity gospel. It's a fake gospel. It's a fake gospel. That all what the kingdom is about and Jesus is about is to make you prosperous and healthy. And if you're really in Jesus, you will be prosperous and healthy and everything will be amazing. And that Jesus is here to make you happy. And he's the genie in the bottle, you know, to do your desires and wishes. That's a fake gospel. Now, I know that because uh, I was exposed to that. Maybe I, I, I would say as well, I lived it part of my younger days. Another gospel would be hyper grace gospel. The hyper grace gospel is that you are amazing, you are awesome, you're phenomenal. Jesus loves you as you are. You, that you, just, you just be yourself because you want to be genuine and you want to be authentic. And, and there is grace, there is grace for you no matter what you do, no matter how you fall, no matter how much you sleep around, no matter how. No. That's a fake gospel. Don't try to teach Jesus to be gracious, by the way. He is the epitome of grace. So if you think that you can be as you are, and this is all what Jesus wants from you, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You will see when I'm sharing about the gospel. Hyper grace gospel, and that whatever you do is accepted and it's okay and it's fine is not the gospel of Christ. There is as well the gospel of works. And the gospel of works is that by your works, you become righteous. By your works, you, you would obtain salvation. Or it might be that you obtain salvation, but then you live by works. You have to be like brilliantly amazing. And, and that really relies on you. You see, all those gospels revolve around you. Your hope is in you. You're centered and what you think of and what you're, who you're living for is you. Okay? That's a fake gospel. You would know that gospel because if you've met Jesus and you received his grace, if you're living by works, you're always worried. You're not doing enough. You're not doing good enough. You're always unhappy. <laughs> okay? If you're in the previous gospel, everything is cool, man. Yeah. Because you're great and Jesus is, accepts whatever. No. There is as well another gospel, and we have it a lot in, in the church in general, especially with those who want to be ministers or those who make as well the church, the social structure. And that gospel is about personal fame and achievements. That Jesus is here now that I'm saved, that he would get me to do great things, amazing things, and be this mighty man and, you know, achieve stuff and make a name for myself and leave a legacy. And, uh, okay, again, the gospel is about you. Jesus is there to make you amazing. No, that's a fake gospel. Now, one of the main things that you need to know about the gospel, and actually the whole existence, everything is about Jesus. You know, he is saying about the Bible, the whole volume is about me. You would do well if you're reading the Bible and you're asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me who Jesus is. How that word reveals about Jesus. What does Genesis reveal about Jesus? What does Exodus reveal about Jesus? You do well if you're not trying to twist the word of the Bible to make the Bible more palatable to your conditions. And to what you're struggling with? The Bible is the word of God. And it is authoritative. Accept it as it is. Even if you're struggling, humble yourself. Humble yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to explain it to you. Sometimes it works amazingly, especially if you choose to change. You know, uh, a good word that was said once to one of the ministers. God spoke to that guy one day and said, Hey, mate, um, you and I are incompatible. We're not on the same wavelength. We're 
were not walking together. And I want to tell you something. I said, yes, Lord. I don't change. God doesn't change. You change your ways. You change your thoughts. You change your beliefs. You change because God will never change. Does that make sense? In that, Caleb, would you come, please? So I'm just going to read to you uh, things that Jesus said. You know, if you have that Bible with the red letters, it's all red letters. Okay? Uh, David didn't pay me enough, so I'm, not, I'm going to stop preaching now. I'm just going to read the Bible. Well, thing is, his word is better than any preach. Let it wash you. Meditate on it. If it helps you to maybe close your eyes and hear it, fine. If you latch on some of the verses and the Holy Spirit is taking you somewhere, that's fine by me. If you're sleeping, that's fine as well. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> I'll pray that God will give you <laughs> even in your sleep, but okay? I'm going to just read you the words of Jesus. So what is the gospel then? Jesus is saying, I came that they may have life. Which means that you don't have life. Don't be deceived. You don't have life. But then, I came that you, they may have life, and it's not an event, that they would journey with me and grow in it and have it more abundantly. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the son of man. And Moses lift, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, the Son of Man, for a lot of Christians, means, you know, Jesus in his humanity. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. If this is what you believe, that's not what Jesus meant. This is a term that is mentioned in Daniel 7, and it has to do with Jesus' divinity. And that he holds... The scroll, he takes it from his father and he holds all the issues of existence, of life. So he's saying, oh, by the way, the one who would go up after the sacrifice, he's the one who descended because he was there all along. This is the son of man. He was talking to Nicodemus. Nicodemus understands what he's talking about. So I'm explaining it to you. So as Moses lifted up that serpent, which was killing the people of God, the symbol of sin. The Son of Man who came down will be lifted as well on a cross, and everyone who looks at him shall be saved. So he's saying, after him being lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Since the Father has given his son authority over all flesh. Everybody says all flesh. all flesh. To give eternal life to all whom he was given, all flesh. That's his authority, to give eternal life. Now here is what eternal life is. And this is eternal life, Jesus says, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now notice this, not know about you, know you. Knowledge here is an experiential knowledge, something that you live, that you breathe, that you eat, that you drink, that, you, that changes you, transforms you, that shapes you. It's like marriage, it's an experience, it's a journey. It is every day, at all times. I'm not married to Susie four hours from the day, or seven, or eight, or 12, 24 seven, 24 seven. How blessed am I? 
Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me through, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you, do we believe this? That affects your everyday living. That affects how you love your wife, how you love your kids, how you treat them. That affects how you work. Are you living in his life at work? How you're treating people? How you're dealing with your money? How you're dealing with your time? Jesus is saying, anyone who doesn't abide in me, he is thrown away like the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burn. If you don't abide, Every day, tall things. But if you abide in me and my words, do you see how he's making him and his words the same? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, that you are truly, truly alive through my life. And so prove to be, so prove to be my disciples. You see, you're not called to leadership. You're not called to greatness. You're not called to your dreams and ambitions. There is one thing that you're called to, just one thing. I'm, I'm sorry, we don't have a shopping mall, okay? One thing, just one thing. To be his child, to be his disciple, to be his follower. To be like Jesus. That's it. To be lost, not first. If you want to be first, be lost. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood, fellowship and eats me continuously. Whoever does that abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is a revelation, and only God gives you that revelation. But Jesus, within that, he's saying this. Oh, Father, thank you. You kept it from the wise and the understanding, but you revealed it to children. If you don't become childlike, you don't enter the kingdom of heaven. Because a child is only dependent on the Father. Don't feed yourself as a baby. You don't change yourself. You don't take care of yourself. You don't protect yourself. You're dependent. You gave it. You revealed it to children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Okay, that's amazing. So what do we do? Oh, come to me. Come to me. And that's not about you coming to rest like, you know, lying in your bed and having your TV. No, no, no. He's not talking about that rest. He's talking about real rest. Salvation. Real rest, being in God's embrace. Real rest, being in his place of rest, which is eternal life. Come to me, all. All who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke. That's the way forward. Take my yoke. 
and learn from me. I'm gentle, or in other translations, I'm meek, which means shapeable, teachable. Okay? So be ready to change. If you think you don't need to change, you're absolutely deluded. You're deceived. So I'm gentle and lowly in heart. What David was talking about, humble yourself. Humble yourself. He is Lord, he is God, and you're not. By the way, that doesn't change. Okay, it will always be the same. He is God, and you're not. He says what it should be, and you obey. But I don't like it. Yeah. Sure, but what would that change? He's still God. But I don't understand it. Sure, but he's still God. It's still true. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me tell you, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. You can come as you are because my strength is enough. And I will not refuse you. I will not refuse you, but I will change you. I will save you. I will deliver you. Yes. I will deliver you. Amen. So how do we live that life? Well, the first thing that Jesus said as he's preaching, repent. Which, by the way, gives you the indication that you're not okay as you are. Yeah? <laughs> repent. Repent. Because now the kingdom of heaven, that God would rule over you and change you and transform you into the likeness of Jesus, is at hand. It is so accessible that it is tangible. You can hold it with your own hand. Everything that we failed in, that I failed in. Oh man, if we had like a couple of years, I can tell you about some of my failures. Everything can change. Not because of what I can do, but because the kingdom of heaven that he would rule over me is at hand repent okay uh, an event and we pass you know you, you pray that prayer salvation prayer or whatever no and then you follow me follow me and I will make you which tells you that you're not okay as you are again okay follow me and I will make you keep following me and let me keep making you. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, we have uh, this thing nowadays in the culture that your truth and my truth, and, okay? Jesus doesn't have that. I'm really sorry. Okay? Jesus... There is only the truth, and that's Jesus, and his word, and his way, okay? There is no your truth, and there is no your way. If you want to be with the Father, if you want to live with him, that's it. It is simple, yet we don't like it, because I like to be what I want. And what I feel, what I feel is truth. No, what you feel is just what you feel. <laughs> you know, it's not truth. It's not truth. Don't be deceived. You know, this thing that you can be whoever you like and you can be a penguin or whatever. It's not truth. It's not even scientific. Okay? You are who God made you to be. And that's it. Full stop. And you're only allowed if you want to live with God because you can live in rebellion and you can live for yourself. You're only allowed to be who God made you to be and who God says you are. Even in calling, you cannot have a calling of your likeness. I, 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 would, really, I would really like to be a prophet, really. But, and, and not any kind of prophet. You know, the seer type. I, I really like that because I love movies. So I, I really want... No, 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 that's not how it works. Your calling is set from God. And your heart should be set on Him, and that's it. 
If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever, whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. If you would be perfect, here is what you need to do. If you want to be perfect, if you want to be right, go. Go sell what you possess, all what you have, your dreams, your assets, what you depend on, what you treasure, what you value, what you cherish. Give it away, give it to the poor. And come, and come and follow me. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Leave the dead to bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So if anyone comes to me, wants to follow me, and does not hate, now underline that word, hate, it's very challenging. <laughs> hate. <sighs> if anyone does not hate his own father, his mother, his wife, his children, brothers and sisters, yes, 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 and even his own life, he cannot, he can not, absolutely cannot, there is no way, no chance, not even a teeny wincy opportunity to be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. But whoever as well denies me, which you're allowed to do, Okay, whoever is ashamed of me, which you, you're allowed to feel like that, that's your choice. If you do that, if you are like that before men, I'll tell you as well my response. I will deny before, I will deny you before my Father who is in heaven. You see, you are free to make a choice, but your choices have consequences. And Jesus, in his grace, are, is informing you of both. Because he is the truth. You see, this life is really difficult. So Jesus is saying, with man this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, difficult times. You will have things that are really perplexing, bewildering, absolutely confusing, difficult, painful. But take heart, I have overcome the world. It is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. And you, you are witnesses of these things. Not that I accept human testimony, by the way, but when the helper whom I will send, the Holy Spirit, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me and with him. So go, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not, whoever does not believe will be condemned. See, Jesus talked about hell more than anyone else in the Bible. And the reason he did that, he wanted you to be aware. He didn't want you to be deceived. He doesn't tell you the good things. He tells you the truth. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do. Because I'm going to the Father. That means that you do the works of Jesus. You spread his word so the poor would be saved. Those who are struggling would be consoled. The sick would be healed. The demonized would be free. The captives would be delivered. If you drink a poisonous thing, it won't harm you. You will live and work through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the invitation. That's the salvation that Jesus is giving. And that's the salvation that you're living in and you are sharing it, proclaiming it to others. Now, here is why he's so sharp about what he says and how you do it. You see, you must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Don't think that any iota, any tittle, any dot from the law will change. He's saying that until earth and heaven would go away. Look around you. Look through the windows. Did earth go away? The law still stands. Yeah, but Jesus is okay with me sleeping around. No. No, no. Jesus is okay with my lust to lust after anyone and everyone. No, definitely not. Jesus is okay with you coming so he would change your heart. So that you won't lust. You won't be angry. That you would bless. That you would love instead of lust. That you would serve instead of control. That you won't be angry. You would be at peace. That's what Jesus is okay with. And he knows that you cannot do it. And he's saying, come to me. Come to me. And be yoked. Be yoked with me. And then you will be fine. Everything would work. So he's saying, enter by the narrow gate. I, I don't know if I'll fit. <laughs> enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide. And the way is easy that leads to destruction. For the gate is wide. And the road, it's easy. It's slippery. It's a sly. That leads to destruction. And you're smashed. For the gate is narrow. The way is hard. That leads to life. And hear this. And those who find it, those who find it are few. Some people would come to me and they would say, Lord, Lord, didn't we in your name do this, do that? Amazing stuff like prophesying, casting out demons, you know, doing miracles. For me, this is the scariest verse in the Bible. One of the best verses, because it's truth. And he said, depart, depart from me, because I didn't know you. I don't know you. I, I told you, knowledge is experiential. It's like marriage. It's something that we do, not on paper. Not that you stood once. No, no, no. Every day, every hour, every moment, in all circumstances, in all aspects of life, that I would know him and acknowledge him as my Lord, my guide, my strength, my life. I live from him. I live in him. And I live for him. Otherwise, I'm not sure, I, I don't know you. And this is not against the omniscience of God. He knows everyone. He knows everyone, absolutely everyone. But did we live together for real? No, 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 not we live together because people now think about living together wrongly. Are we really in a covenant? Are we in a covenant? And are you honoring that covenant? I'll tell you the truth. If you're only living with Jesus, you're not getting there. 
I'm talking about if you're living like nowadays. I'm living with this guy. Jesus will not be a partner. Jesus is the husband of the church. Jesus is the bridegroom of the church. And he will not be a partner. And by the way, for all of us, and that's not a diss against women, Jesus is the head and you submit to him. 100% fully. Fully. You don't get to, to have your way. He is the head. But it's your choice. Do not fear. Do not fear from the world and those who kill the body. But cannot kill the soul. Actually, rather, you should fear from the person who would kill body and soul. That's God, by the way. If you love me, therefore, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. You will abide in my words. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Not just keep them like memorize them. You do them. You live by them. For whoever does my father will in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your might, everything that you have every pulse of your heart, every breath that you take, every thought that you think of, every step that you have in life. You shall love the Lord your God, and he would be your Lord, your God, and no one else, and not you. And you shall love your neighbor as you would love yourself. Actually, I'll tell you what, no, no, you shall love your enemy. And bless them. And bless them and pray for them. You shall love your enemy, the ones who are threatening you, who are annoying you, who are killing you, who are persecuting you. You shall love your enemy. And uh, by the way, with the family, you shall love the family as I have loved you. As I have sacrificed myself, as I have let go of receiving glory, it's my right. Oh, you would let go of your rights. You would let go of your rights. You would let go of your dreams, your ambitions, everything, and love your brother as I loved you. Yes. And therefore, you would love God like that. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. The calling is for you to love God, to follow Jesus, and be like him. And the Father knows that you cannot do that, so he sent Jesus to make way for you so that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is possible, not in your own flesh, not in your power, but in his spirit, by his word. But you stick to that day in, day out. You live by that every moment. You challenge your attitudes towards others, towards money, towards time, towards ideas, towards whatever you believe in through that lens. You don't live for your rights, your dreams, your ambitions, no. You don't decide for yourself, no. You live for Him. Do you accept that? Do I accept that? Do we settle for this? I uh, told you about the fake Gospels, and I would tell you the truth. Everyone here, of course myself included, okay, we have bits of fake Gospels in us. We have bits of fakeness in us, and we have things from the Lord. But Jesus was saying this, that whoever does my word, teaches my word, and lives it, and keeps it, and so on, would be great in the kingdom. But he made, a, he made a comparison. Whoever hears my word and doesn't live by it and teaches as well others not to live by it, by the way they're living, but maybe as well by how you're, you know, you're rationalizing how life should be. Yes, it might be that you've met Jesus, but you would be least in the kingdom. Least in the kingdom. Let alone if you are in the kingdom. 
Only Jesus can judge that. I can't. As we're coming to Jesus, maybe you haven't met Jesus ever before. If you've never met Jesus before or if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life in the way that the scriptures spoke today, if you felt, oh, I accepted Jesus, you know, to come and just bless me and I'm going on my way and he should be there to kind of pat me on the shoulder and say, ah, okay? Maybe you need to give your life to Jesus and you and know that he is God and you're not. That he will not change his ways or his truth for you. You have to change. But maybe you've accepted Jesus, but you decided to walk like that. So you need to be purified. You see, even gold has to be purified. Silver has to be purified. But I'll tell you what, if it's hay, paper, even wood will be burnt. The fire of the Holy Spirit that purifies, burns. And Jesus came to baptize us in the Spirit and with fire. So would you allow the Holy Spirit to purify you? Would you not just allow it as if, as if like you are the one in control? Of course you have a choice. Would you seek it wholeheartedly? Would you choose it? even though you are resisting it. You keep choosing it, choosing it until it happens in your life. Do you really, do we really, us, do we want to live for Jesus wholeheartedly? Do we want to be led by the Spirit? Do we want to worship Him with everything that we have, everything that we are? Then we need the work of the Holy Spirit. And we have to know that the work of the Holy Spirit is going to be sometimes painful but encouraging. Yeah? We're going to sing that song. And it says, Refiner's Fire. Let's welcome the Refiner's Fire. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit to work on us and in us, to purify us, to purify us, for He deserves the glory. Stand with me. Make it your prayer that you would say, purify my heart. Purify my heart. Purify my heart. My mind, my life, that it would be yours. That it would give you glory and be yours alone. Only you deserve everything about me. Everything about me. Because created me and you saved me you you redeemed me yes. purify my heart